Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Game, and we are returning to the Great War. Now, last time around, we did capture Colmar in the south over here, and I did talk a little bit about our strategy in the north of trying to shorten the front line and sort of skim that or sort of roll around uh, from our place at Ypres. Now, before we do that, I do think I want to attack into Manstown here first from Verdun. And there are two reasons for that. Uh, one is I think one of our strategy is going to be to drive onto Kreuznach, the headquarter. If we capture that, we're going to win the game. It's going to be tough going because this is, after, war, after all, the First World War. And there's going to be tough going through all of this territory. Metz is one of the reasons, uh, one of the strong points with four stars over here. So this is going to be fought over pretty drastically. Um, but behind that, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. So we're going to try to capture that and at least start the process here. Um, that's the one reason, so I think it's simply a useful thing to do. The other thing that I think is good is currently there's going to be a good opportunity because there's only two enemy cores here, A, and the last reason I want to go for that is to just show you a little bit about what the game can be and, and how it's going to evolve through time because Verdun is one of the places that has fortifications as uh, shown by this here. So there are some pre-existing things uh, that are going on down here. and. I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than uh, what we've seen before. Now we've got 740 supply over here, but nevertheless I do think building another supply depot down here in Verdun is going to be useful. Yes, it is going to cost us some money, but Verdun is such an important place that hinges sort of in all directions that I think is good. And lastly we can have, uh, you can see we've got some normal French cores here, but we've also got an elite core here, so it should be fun and we're going to see some things that are going hit on in the Battle of Verdun to Metz. Four stars, you can already see the minimap here is a little bit different with uh, these little hills, uh, but also the no man's land is a little bit distributed, so you've got these separate areas which I think is, it's kind of funny and it's kind of weird. Um, but on the other hand, because this is four stars, it is going to be at least, at least another battle from this direction. Um, so it's probably going to be a little bit more permanent and we need to think about the structure here. And you can already see that there are some pre-existing earthworks. There's a bunker down here uh, with this little machine gun emplacement pillbox. That's different to the machine guns that you can place uh, before that. And you can sort of see that it's all very much, uh, well, thrown together already. Right, um, so the enemy has that spot X over here, they've got a command trench over here. These are not connected for now, but I think the AI is going to do that in their setup phase. So I think that's something that we are going to do too. And I think we're probably going to attack on the left here and then defend on the right. That should work to me. So let's start out by, I'm not sure whether they're going to connect up their trenches, they might. But let's see about that. Right, um, let's start out by, you can see we've got a lot of supply, so we don't need to be too uh, stingy here. And it looks like our light artillery will easily cover their entire area, so let's place these guys first. Uh, remember this time they've got two, and we're going to place some heavy artillery here too. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you what these guys can do in just a second, but that should uh, deal with that. I think on the right we're going to defend. I think the defensive setup here is fine. There's this little forest here, uh, which is a bit of a problem because they can filter through here and they could flank us here. So I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this trench. So I'm going to use not use that. And instead, how are we going to do that? So I think what I want to do instead is use this setup. I don't particularly like that, but I still think it's it's viable to use that. So it's sort of that V-shape. The issue is, of course, we can't really fire very well at people coming in directly from that direction. But that trench might help out a little bit. We've got this place here. They can fire into that direction, so it is going to work. We could, if we really think that they are going to attack, use some of our machine guns to sort of cover that area. Can we use that very well? well? We could place it over here and we would have at least coverage of that area. But I think this is this is going to be alright. And on this side of the front uh, we're going to use standard infantry just to hold down that line. I think we're going to place at least an infantry uh, company into that little forest there. That should work out. I think that is going to cover us on that front pretty well actually. But we're going to place one more infantry down here just for defensive purposes. And speaking of defensive purposes, I think another trench over here might make some sense. 
Hmm. So we're going to probably try to jump across here and use our front lines as such, right? So... Like that makes sense. And because all of this is connected anyway, I think we can place another comm trench down here. The only thing that would prevent is setting up a, a machine gun into that direction. But I don't think that's what we, where we'd want to place it anyway. We'd probably want to cover that corner. So, yeah, I think the comm trench here is going to work fine. It's going to give us a little bit more flexibility in moving up. And on the far left here... I think we should place down one more trench going into that direction. Again, we are on the offensive, so it doesn't matter too much, I would believe, to set up the trenches correctly, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, since we can do it anyway, let's do it. Right. And again, sometime we might fight this defensively. Uh, and since we do have the supply now to actually place down some of this stuff, uh, I think that's going to be A-OK. -okay. Right. Let's set up a lot of elite infantry here in the uh, first lines because these guys are just generally a little bit better at taking out enemy trenches. So we are going to place them over there for sure. And we're going to try to place all of these guys simply so that we can pull them forward. And you know what? We're going to place that one last trench here. Again, this is not ideal. Sometimes they can put it through that. Uh, but I think it's going to be still. Good. Three artillery pieces, lots of infantry. You know what? Um, we're actually going to use one less infantry and instead going to use another light artillery piece. Yeah, there we go. We could even use an observation balloon, but I don't think it's, it's really that useful. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the defensive situation up here. Especially with that little V-shape, I'm not a big fan of that, but extending right until the forest, that doesn't sound too too brilliant either. So, I can't, can't place it this direction, can I? Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, there's that little bunker. On the other hand, that machine gun over here should cover most of, most of the potential approaches. Could use that over here, but it wouldn't cover a lot, would it? Just barely. Just barely. How about over here? Yeah, let's let's use that. I think that's going to be all right. And then you know what? Indeed, we can put down that com trench. Ah, let's leave it. Okay. Right, begin the battle, and let's beat the Germans here. In was it Metz? <laughs> I forgot even the place. So, no, no, nevertheless, uh, let's see. Right, we can see some Germans in the opposite trenches here. That's interesting to see, always. Uh, we're going to use some hotkeys here, and I do want to give them time to attack if they want to. Doesn't seem to be the case. But yeah, you can see the trench lines are getting a lot more complicated as the game goes by. And we can't easily flank them anymore. They are they're very strong and um, extensive. Now, one of the things that happens is that once that this stuff occurs, it really gets a little bit difficult to break through and you really have to think about how you do it. But once you are in the trenches, you can sort of move up in the trenches and it becomes a little bit of a trench clearing game, uh, which is also kind of fun because it's very different. Um, nevertheless, uh, let's start out by moving these guys here into the woods, just so that we have that area covered as well. Right. With that being said, I think what we're going to try to do is get into this first line of trenches. The problem is, even if it's a very short distance here, we would be shoot up. We would be completely shot up, uh, especially by these trenches here in the back. They can cover the trenches in the front. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to certainly try to place down some artillery here to cover these trenches in the rear. And there is a machine gun on the left. The left is a bit extensive here. So I think we're going to try to... I don't think we've got enough stuff to cover the entire area. So... I cover two of these with one... But we have to cover the rear too. 
So I think we're going to go to the right here slightly. Or at least capture only these two things. Yeah, that makes sense. Capture these two. Yeah, I think that will work. Okay, we're going to place down some light artillery on these guys. We're going to place down heavy artillery on this. And you can see that the circle here is a lot smaller. So it doesn't really cover that much. You can barely cover two trenches with that. The advantage of this is that it does actually do some damage to these troops. And even though it's mitigated because they are in a trench, and there are better trenches that you can develop later on. But you guys are going to march into here, and you guys are going to march into there. Now, these trenches in the rear there are going to fire on us for sure. And I think they're going to fire at us pretty rapidly uh, from the onset over here. So let's actually already start to lay down some suppression on them. And let's see. Right. No further ado. Let's go over here. Yeah, these guys are also suppressed. That's important. Uh, the heavy artillery does suppress as well. We are being shot at from that trench over there. Nothing we can do for now, but we have made it into the trenches relatively unmolested. And we are fighting now standard German infantry. Uh, you're going to find that standard German infantry is a lot harder to beat than the uh, than the reserves. And I'm going to pause here for a second because we will need to bring up some reserves. Attention. Right, you guys move up over here. You guys move over there. You guys move over there. Sort of everyone moves up a space. So that you're ready for the next sort of set of jump off positions. And there's a lot of movement already in the rear trenches there. Um, and you can see that these guys here have been mauled up relatively, relatively strongly, which is good. Ah, sound of speed is fine, I think. Right, you've already beaten these guys because you're two against one. That's good. Move up there. And we can't even move further troops to the front line yet because they're going to be chewed up um, aggressively here. Also notice that we've got elite infantry and they've got standard infantry, so it's still better than uh, sort of not having anything at all there, but still it's, it's a bit tough. Right, I think you guys can probably beat them, so let's move you guys up there. You guys can get over there. Right. You're gonna be fine over there. Let's move both of you further through the front there. And I think it is time to get in more reinforcements. So let's lay down suppressive fire on these rear trenches there. We've got the the points to basically take that out. And you're gonna move over there. You know what, we're going to be fired upon by these guys, but I guess you guys can move up too. You guys are going to beat them, but uh, you are exhausting yourselves there a little bit. Let's move you up. Move up. Move up at least one of them. I think one of them is, can s remain in here, just to fire upon... Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. Okay, so we are seeing some sort of offensive here from the Germans on that part of the front line. That's interesting. Now, we've apparently lost one troop, so we're going to bring in one more here into that trench so that they can fire up on this attack while we are taking care of that melee over here. Um, and again, we should be moving up our reinforcements so that they can start to filter into these front lines. We are going to lose that fight here for sure. Mm, but I think it's going to be all right. Let's see how this attack is going to go. They are passing in through. They are passing into into machine gun fire and these two trenches, and you can see how quickly they are melting away there. So I'm not particularly concerned. I think that machine gun down here was a very good decision. Uh, but let's revisit that in a moment. Right. Uh, speaking of revisiting that in a moment, they are coming in here from the forest, and that is, of course, a pretty bad thing for us. Right. I don't think these guys are going to succeed. I don't think these guys are going to succeed. You can see some of them breaking already. Nevertheless, it's probably a good idea to have that short up a little bit. 
Right, and we could use the heavy artillery on some of these spaces, so let's use them on that because it seems like a lot of Germans are passing through there. You guys, I think, are going to be alright over there. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to do some suppressive fire there and move in more reinforcements. There's a machine gun nest over there. That might be too aggressive, but we're going to see. Right, front line on the right there. Lots of dead Germans, but nothing uh, else, so that's good. Okay, we've beaten them back relatively significantly on all of, in all of these places. Let's try to get rid of them in the back there. Attendez, les mettez-vous en position. Tenez-vous prêt. Préparez-vous sur la ligne. Attention, sur la ligne. Make sure that we've got all of these spaces covered. And again, only one group can fire out of trenches. So, since this is mostly for them to be sort of locked in, I think, and and uh, preventing them from. Oh Jesus. Yeah, that, that was wrong. Okay, you guys move in there, you guys move in here. Because you're firing on, on them anyway. You know what? Uh, we can actually use suppressive fire there. You guys have moved up over here. Let's bring you into that trench here in the middle so that we're going to clear out all of this space here on the left. And this is the sort of trench clearing game that I was talking about earlier. And you guys are incredibly beat up. We're going to try to pull you back so that you don't actually surrender. Because that would cost us points and we don't want to lose points. So that's going to be a-okay if we can get you out of this fight alive as a unit. Even if it's just a single guy. And then I'm going to be happy about that. Right. That line is holding super well. Guys down here are doing alright too. And I think we can move everyone up. I really um, like there to be a little bit more complexity to these melee fights. It's a little bit like you're sending in troops and it's not that much strategy. Um, the only strategy that you can use is sort of use bombardments before to soften them up a little bit. Um, stuff like that basically. But it's not like it's it's not like super impactful. I would like there to be, you know what, um, things like... No, 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 no. Remain in the trench. Ah, and that's the other thing. One misclick here, and they're out of the trench and being fired upon. And they lost a significant amount of health just by being exposed there for a second to that machine gun. But, you know what, I did the misclick, so I should uh, be uh, the blame for that. Right. You guys moved up here. Let's push forward the melee assault so that we can bring in more reinforcements. But it feels like there's little you can do to sort of support the outcome of a melee attack once it engages. It would be, you know what, I, I think a fun mechanic would be if the trench next to you is occupied, you do get some sort of positive modifier. I think that would be great. Um, but so far it's pretty much only using artillery ahead of the actual assault that, that's sort of vaguely helpful. And you need to be kind of careful about how you're moving units up or not. Okay, but things there are working relatively well. I think most of these units are now Attention. far enough away that we can sort of cross that just like that. These assaults here going well, but our units are starting to look a little bit weak. And again, losing a unit means losing points, which we don't want to do. So let's try to push forward troops that are a little bit stronger. You guys, we're actually going to order you to withdraw from the battlefield completely. And you're being killed by that machine gun. Not good. Right, you can probably beat a single standard core since you're elite. So that's alright. You are tossing grenades at that guy. That's okay. You are beaten up a little bit. I'm going to park you over here simply to cover any attack that might occur there. 
Yeah, bad timing over there, but still okay. Got some troops down there. I think I want to push up more troops before we do anything funny over there. You've guys won that fight. Let's move you behind that machine gun so that we can toss some grenades at them. And here we're going to do a little swap around. Remember, only two divisions. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say, can continue to say divisions. Uh, only two guys, only two companies can cover a trench line. So if you want a units to pass each other, you basically have to take the space and, and get a little space there between them. So that's what we're going to try to do here. And this looks bad because we've got two units coming in. These are pretty weakened up. So that will probably mean that they're going to come into that trench. And the thing is, once they are in the trench, they sometimes sort of rubber band another unit back into that trench. But this time around, that does not seem to be the case. Okay, so we're going to bring forward more troops there. They're bringing in a lot of troops here. Right, you guys. Let's actually bring you into the command center. You guys are going to deal with that machine gun. Which evidently has fired at that unit. Right. Lots of melee fights over here. And not looking great for us. There's not much our light artillery can do about that. If we had more heavy artillery, that would have been useful at this point. Bring them forward. Dealt with that machine gun there, so that's lovely. You should be able to fire these guys here. They're out in the open. They're going to melt away. And that's lovely. Right, you guys are moving to the top there. That's good. We, you, we could actually withdraw. I don't think we need to, though, strictly speaking. Do we have any troops down here that I've sort of forgotten about? These guys are fine where they are, I think. Yeah. These guys aren't super strong, but they are alright. Let's bring them forward. That's going to trigger more attacks, so let's also bring you forward. There is a melee fight in that command trench, but we're going to win that because we've got elite troops and they don't. Do we see them moving up? If we do, we should be using heavy artillery. and We are starting to capture that point X there as well, so that is good. Let's try to push forward a little bit um, to see whether they've got any machine gun emplacements or anything like that. Because it usually makes sense to try to defeat that before uh, they have any chance to do anything else. Gather our troops. You guys are capturing that. That's okay. Seems to be me there is a machine gun emplacement over here. Let's bring you forward, try to destroy that. You guys can try to defeat them. And afterwards we're going to capture X. I guess at this point it's fairly clear that we have practically at least won that game. So I'm going to do double time here. And you can actually start to go to X here please. To capture it. Should, have cap uh, should capture that immediately there. Dealt with all of these machine gun nests, so that's good. Dealing with these guys down here. Defeating them soundly. Capturing this, capturing that. Lovely. And over there, you can even walk outside of the trench, so that's lovely. And here we go with ample of time to spare. But yeah, I wanted to show you that battle because A, well, it's a little bit more complex, but it does uh, show you what that game can be. 
Next battles are probably going to be a little bit simpler again, and probably a little bit faster. I'm going to go through them uh, so that maybe we can get uh, two battles each episode. But they're more representative of the early war, whereas this is sort of a mid-war thing. Uh, even though we don't have a lot of the sort of cool tools like uh, tanks, airplanes, and uh, some of the other things. It's only a major victory. Yeah, well, they only have one control point that, that can be captured. That is a little bit unfortunate. We are losing some money. Uh, we are using 400 to destroy our, uh, to reinforce our 2,500 elite infantry. They lost 6,000, for which they're going to pay more. We're going to get, going to add it a little bit, which I hate to do. Right, so major victory here, but no status change, and that's, that's bad. Uh, also, notice that because Verdun is using one of the supply depots, this is costing us global supply. That's not good. Uh, we are going to need some more supply over time, but it is one of the battles. No, actually, Metz has lost a star. Hmm. Small bug there, uh, but that's that's the first battle of Metz here. Uh, you can see it's going to take at least four more. Uh, I think we're going to attack from Nancy as well, because it's adjacent. It has one of the supply depots, so we can bring more forces to bear there, and that's useful. Uh, the only disadvantage here is Nancy doesn't have any elite infantry. And since it's likely that we're going to fight over there over some time, I think we're actually going to bring forward one of our elite troops into Nancy. They will not be able to participate in the attack this turn, but in uh, once we go to January, I think it's going to be possible to use them and just shore up our attack there. And I think that's going to be uh, pretty useful over time. And since we are pushing down here, I think we might be using more elite troops. On the other hand, this is pushing into Germany, and uh, the French troops only enjoy their national advantage in their home territory. So ultimately, we might be replacing some of the Brits over here, push them down into Germany, and have France really fight over Peron, Lille, and all of these areas. But not for now. For now, we are, I think, going to be all right in attacking from French territory, at least, into Metz. And Verdun is such a lovely place here uh, because it has that plus 30 base morale. Uh, modifier because it's the pride of France and that's actually all allied infantry so it's not just French um, but that's good right that being said I think this is a good place to put in a cut and let me know whether you'd like um, the battles to be a bit more condensed whether you'd like more or less pauses more or less explanations uh, but some of the battles uh, at least in the early war probably going to be a little bit faster and then the mid-war, I guess we're going to be a little bit more selective in what we do. I know December turn is taking a long time here uh, because we've got so many battles to fight and exploit that many uh, weaknesses in their initial setup. But yeah, there we go. Hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye, guys.